a state trooper beat a man with his flashlight so bad. He broke the man's jaw, three fractured ribs, broke his wrist, gashed to the head. Let's go to the video. Damn shame. This was a Louisiana state trooper. You saw a, you saw a beating with a flashlight. The beating left the victim, Aaron Larry Bowman. It left Mr. Bowman with a broken jaw, three fractured ribs, a broken wrist, and a gash to his head that required six, ladies and gentlemen, six damn staples to close. Said a lawyer who's representing him in a civil rights lawsuit filed last year in the Louisiana, in Louisiana against the state police. Let's put up a picture of Mr. Bowman, the victim here. That's him in the hospital. Okay? He's the victim. Ron Haley, one of Bowman's attorneys, said Officer Jacob Brown beat his client. With an eight inch aluminum flashlight, Brown hit him within seconds of initial contact and hit Bowman at least 18 times in 24 seconds. Haley said, let's show a picture of Jacob Brown from the sheriff's office. That's the cop. Brown was charged in December with aggravated second degree battery and malfeasance in office. He has not entered a plea. State prosecutors said that case remains on hold as federal investigators are conducting their own investigation into Brown's actions. Mr. Brown, who was facing criminal charges in two unrelated excessive force cases, resigned one month earlier. Repeat offender. You understand? Repeat offender. Why? Because it's not about policy, it's about culture. It's not about policy, it is about culture. It doesn't matter what the words say. It doesn't matter what your policy is. If your culture is adversarial to the policy, that culture will eat policy alive every day. And here you have it. Um, The division of the Louisiana State Police where Brown worked, Troop F, is under investigation for potential abuses committed by troopers, plural. Against black motorists. That investigation followed the death of Ronald Green, a black motorist who died after he was beaten and tased following a car chase that began when Green did not stop for officers. Um, John, what are your thoughts here? I mean, yeah, it's devastating to watch the footage. Uh, I feel like you know, I'm glad that you brought up uh, Ronald Green because I think about like that footage, I think about the footage of the mm-hmm. cop doing the pit maneuver and flipping the SUV of the pregnant woman like do you, do you ever feel like watching this footage and seeing like undeniable evidence of how awful your fellow man can be like take something away from you like it's yeah. just devastating to actually have to see it and to and to, to get a window into who this person is that they can arrive on the scene run up and within seconds think I'm going to hit this person as many times as I can and that's bad about that one person but he was surrounded by other cops. They don't care. They, they thought what he was doing was fine. They didn't yep. stop him then. They didn't. He he lied about it. He lied about the use of force. They pretended there wasn't body cam footage. He's bad, 
but the system had how many people had to work together to shield him from justice for two years. Like it is so much bigger than just that awful cop. That's right, that's right, very well said. And the thing is, what we find time and time again, we find the protection. Because if they could have protected him, they would have. The story just got too big and it, it was no longer you know, feasible to actually provide protection for this guy. But now you have jurisdictions who have created new laws, um, uh, you know, the mandate to report law, right? But if you don't enforce that law, uh, the infraction is only as strong as the enforcement, that's it. So you have now these new laws called mandate to report. Um, and obviously this jurisdiction is in bad need of it. But if you do not change the culture, it doesn't matter what the words say. I know we keep talking about reform, but damn, John is getting so bad. I think we need to start talking about replacement because yeah. these same cops are not the cops that would get you to where you want to be in American society in American society. Yeah, I don't know like whether it's, you know, these rural areas where you have cops, it seems like the department is just it's the place that the racists go to get paid while yeah. doing their horrible violent hobby basically. And then you have LA has like massive gangs in the police, in the police. Like yeah, what well, I hope that Kamala Harris comes out in, in favor of some like new reforms. I'm sure that'll clean it up. Like, how is that supposed to st like these are some of the worst people in our country happen to have a badge. You have to weed out, I don't know what the percentage is, a significant percentage of the most personally violent ones, a larger percentage of those that have been perfectly fine for decades to just watch it happen. Mm -hmm. Once you get done with that, were you to do it, what would you even be left with at the yeah. end of that? Yeah.